first guest today is one of stand-up's biggest stars. Since he threw his hat into the comedy ring back in 2003, he's been showing audiences the funny side of life by telling them all about his slightly neurotic and compulsive personality. Some say he's a pessimist, but he still brings a smile to our faces with stories like this. Please welcome John Richardson. <laughs> I'm not scared, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> All your kinky chat out of the way before I came out, yeah? Yeah, so no, we're starting it again now. Oh, are we? <laughs> Excellent, good. Well, what do you make of that, then, the, the, the research that says that, uh, you know, women like imagery as much as men do? If not more. Well, I would say that's right, though, isn't it? I'd say, yeah. you know, there's, there's always takes two to tango, so to speak. Mm, so yeah. I we'll love the about idea sex, that... Sex, love, not dance and pet. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen how I dance. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't seen how I have sex. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rhythm involved. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I love the idea that you don't have enough backstory on your. Like, as if you're watching porn, going, that washing machine's not really broken. No, I don't. You just I... need to change the filter. <laughs> I can't buy into this. <laughs> The washing machine broke in the first place. It's a bit of build up. Yeah. Need a bit of storm. And I'd like to see what tiles they have in their utility room. Yeah, <laughs> you see? Yeah, but you see, you would kick off if men made pornography that was women doing the washing first. You'd be like, oh, they're only aroused by watching us do the washing. You go, oh, we just want to see how the machine filling. broke. <laughs> <laughs> do you get embarrassed talking about sex? Not on telly when my nan's watching, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think men in general are embarrassed? In, in, in front of women, I suppose. Uh, I, th I think there's a lot of. That, there's a lot of, when you do a survey like that, there's a lot of women are obliged to answer a certain way. Do you think and men... are you saying we lie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John, Consistently. Do you, think, do you think you maybe talk about it too much because you've been quite open about the fact that you're not doing it very much? <laughs> eight, eight years, I'm a little bit it? worried. Is it eight years or something? It's been, yeah, yeah the clock's ticking. Why? Yeah. Listen, I've been there seven years. Seven yeah. years I went without, and, I, and now. Yeah, but at I least you've made up for it. lost oh, time, I've John. Made up. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yeah. How, how are you dealing with that? You're looking for a Well, girlfriend. I just don't... I don't see it's one... Of, I, I, I think it's like going to the cinema. Like, it's nice if you do it, but if you don't, it's just cos you were doing other stuff. Well, you, you, you've, you've said... You, you've said yeah. in, your, in, your, in your book, which I think is a brilliant title, it's not me, it's you. <laughs> which I think maybe explains why you're single. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, one of the things you say in it is that, you know, the, people make too much about the whole thing, about how long it's been since he had sex. You might have been busy doing things like going to the cinema. Yeah. But you watch a lot of films. <laughs> Specific type of film, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I find it odd. The whole relationship thing, I just find yeah. there's so much you can do in the world that it's baffling well, that the, everyone focuses on that. But you strive for be perfection, happy. don't you, in your life? This is one of your, would you say, neuroses, really, that you, again, that you're quite open and very funny about. That you haven't got a girlfriend is that you're too looking much of a perfectionist. perfectionist. Yeah, I think. Well, no, it's more the other way around. It's more, everyone talks about looking for the one, but you're also kind of expecting yourself to be the one for someone else and I know myself too well to think there's a woman out there where I say, I'm your best chance, love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one for you. I find that's quite a cocky thing to say that of all the men in the world, I yeah. am your best chance of happiness. I mean, I have to say, we're, we're laughing about the, the cover, it's not me, it's you, but actually it's got quite a deep meaning behind it, because ba basically saying, you know, I don't love you anymore and you can cry as much as you like, but it's nothing's going to change that fact. That's basically what what you've said in the book, and that that's that's kind of to the point and quite deep and personal, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I think people don't, you know, at the end of relationships, people think they're being kinder by sugar in the pill and saying, "Oh, it's it's not you, it's me." But really, that just means that person goes, "Well, I can't do anything about that. I can't change that." So it's much more honest to say, "It's just over. It's finished. I hate so, you." Do you believe that it could happen for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think it's one of those things that, uh, you know, that's the point of view from someone who's been single for eight years. But as yeah. soon as you meet someone... Like, I don't feel bad saying that, because I know anyone who is in love would just look at me and go, <laughs> you sad idiot. You know, <laughs> you... when you're in love, it's all that you think about. Do you think you might have to lighten up a little bit, though? Because <laughs> you are a bit pedantic, aren't you, about, you know, tidiness and things? I sort of rather think that rather than me lightening up, everyone would just do stuff Do what properly. you do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Would you look for somebody who's the same as you or somebody oh, who's no. the opposite oh, of no. you? 
Uh, I think I would end up killing both. I think <laughs> there has to be a... I, I, but is it compulsive, John, to the point that you, like, have to have the beans in that, like, you know, that, that sort of compulsive behaviour? Uh, yeah, genuinely, but it's, that's right, though, isn't it? If you're putting tins away, have them facing you so you can see what's in the tin. Yeah, that's I not... think that's fair enough. <laughs> it's, it's exciting, cos you're like, ooh, what's in that one, you see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're not funny, you'll be Yeah, exactly, <laughs> just put your hand in the card. Sometimes there's things that are off in there, it's great. Brilliant. Do you know, and if you take all the labels off, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> now you're going to get the Oh. Now, John, you, you're a little bit more in your comfort zone and eight out of ten cats, aren't you? Mm. Are, are you enjoying that? Let's have a little little clip of you in action. A book came out this week that talked about the extent of the, uh, the rivalry between them and the fact they haven't really spoken since, and it's, it's actually a lot worse than it was reported at the time. At the time, David went, no, I'm really pleased for him. It's brilliant. <laughs> it would be more of a surprise if they'd really got on. and like Because the, the alternative to them not being at work together is them doing it together like Jedward on the dispatch box. <laughs> like, I'm David and I'm Edward. <laughs> <laughs> I was Deadwood. Here, here. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> so you're, you. you're... You've taken over from Jason Manford on, on the show. Yeah, yeah. How are you enjoying it? It's good? Yeah, it's great. Wearing a jacket, like a proper grown-up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did they make you wear that? No, I decided. I said, if I'm going to be a captain, I'm going to wear a jacket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> show though it's so competitive isn't it i've done it and it was i hardly said anything because the comedians were all like blah 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 yeah, no, being I hope, funny I, I i baffles me that that i mean you must feel it baffles me that that's become the perception of comics and rachel riley was on last night and she was great and she's intelligent and she's funny and she said oh, i was really intimidated and i find it baffling that mm. people are frightened of comedians now i think it's quite a new thing mm. and a comedian should be there so that you would feel comfortable saying anything and yeah. together comedians we'll on mass i think they're scared of yeah, I th well, that's yeah. the nice thing about 8 out of 10 cats is you get people who yeah. aren't comics, so there is time to have a conversation and the other ones. Well, John, one place that there's comedians en masse is, of course, Edinburgh. Uh, you're going to be doing your, your tour that you're going to do Edinburgh, It's Not Me, It's You, which is all based on the book. Was that from the 20th to the 28th of August? So go and have a look at that if, uh, if you fancy the sound of it. It's been lovely to meet you. Hope we haven't been too scary for you. That's fine. <laughs> no, it's been fine. I've, I've Thank challenged you. some views. <laughs> <laughs> it's John Richardson, everyone.